the week, I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Andy Osho and Russell Howard, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. We start with our round called Headliners. Here's a picture of former Prime Minister Tony Blair and friends. But what does BMIS stand for? Is it a list of what's in Blair's memoirs? Bragging, moaning and icky sex. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's not Sorry. just John Prescott going, bugger me, I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> or is it all the things you'd rather have than read the book? Bulimia, myxomatosis and an itchy scrotum. <laughs> They're all laughing because it's ballistic missiles improve Sunderland. <laughs> Prescott, Prescott looks like he's just bored. He's just running through lists in his head. Yeah. Bet Midler, I'd shag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it Barry Brown? Manilow. <laughs> <laughs> or is it both Millibands, I'd shag? <laughs> I, I think it's actually it's what Blair isn't saying. Believe me, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is, it, is it Blair, my influences, Satan? <laughs> <laughs> or is it their nicknames, Brainy, Miserly and Insignificant Sausage Muncher? Ever yeah. anyone's nickname, insignificant yeah. sausage man. Well, strange you should say that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's longer than anyone's name. <laughs> is it just simply Blair memoir is shit? <laughs> so we're going to have to move to the correct answer. I'll give you. You're almost halfway there. Is it Blair's memoir's incredible sales? Yes, very well done. Congratulations. <laughs> Yes, the answer I was looking for was Blair's memoirs, Incredible Sales. This is a story that ex-Prime Minister Tony Blair has finally published A Journey, his hotly anticipated account of his time in power. Waterstones claimed it to be their fastest-selling autobiography of all time, outstripping on its first day successful memoirs by celebrities such as David Beckham, Russell Brand and Dawn French. Who doesn't come out of this well? Brown, but I, I just don't understand why people are buying it. We've heard it all before. You We've know? heard it nine times yeah, before. Like, Blair it. doesn't get on with Brown. What next? David Blunkett's crap at Wink Murder. We know... <laughs> The, title, the titles are terrible as well, isn't it? A journey. The title it's, it's, is terrible. A journey is terrible. Make, they're, yeah. they're just so pretentious. A journey is pretentious. Uh, the Third Man by Mandelson, that's pretentious. What you want is John Prescott's Read This or I'll Punch You in the Face. Yeah. That's, that's the kind of title oh, I want. Also, he went, didn't he? He went his journey, in fact, he went from Islington to Downing Street to Connaught Square in Bayswater. That is not much of a journey. <laughs> 45 minutes at best. I mean, let's face it, Michael Palin's there going, well, it's not pole to pole. <laughs> <laughs> he said that George Bush was an intelligent man, which is a bit like saying that Joseph Fritzl's a family guy. This <laughs> is a... <laughs> Why has the, uh, how's the book been compared to a Mills and Boone? Because you don't want to read it. <laughs> because there's some racy passages in it. Yeah, there's racy... Pa him describing him having sex with Cherie, which is... It's gr it is grim. Hey, 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 hey. They're a married couple. OK, we didn't need to know. The actual quote... Uh, he said, on that night, I needed that love Sherry gave me, selfishly. Oh. Waka, 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 I waka, waka, waka. devoured it. <laughs> do it sexy, do it real sexy, do it real sexy. I, was, sexy. I yeah. was an animal. Yeah. <laughs> Following my instinct. I can't do it. Your future in audiobooks is not assured. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, no one's going to book me to do no. sexy <laughs> audiobooks. No. How are you? Oh, the writing. Uh, <laughs> Stop, he was all over like a rush. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we heard a bit about what he was saying about, you know, devouring Sharia stuff. It was hideous. It was like, imagine your parents dogging. It was wrong. <laughs> you, did, you know, you just didn't want to read it. What's amazing about this is just the, the way that journalists have reacted in this, this mock shock that he should... Uh, I mean, he, doesn't talk, he didn't talk sexy like that when he was Prime Minister. <laughs> no, he was Prime Minister. The Go Compare Man doesn't sing the whole time. That's how I think. <laughs> There's no time when he was going to say during Prime Minister's questions, and I would just like to say to my right hand, Friend, Big Tony gonna sort you out, bow, chicka, bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> he's basically, he, you know, he'd been accused of sexing up a dossier and now he has <laughs> sexed up a dossier. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you went after he's going, oh, I devoured Cherie or whatever it was. You weren't sure what he was going to put next, you know. I flopped out my weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> <laughs> in 
45 minutes later, yeah. it launched. <laughs> it turns out, too, that um, uh, Cherie is actually her middle name, and her first name is Chim 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 Chimini Chim Chim. <laughs> Weakness does Blair reveal? Mini baby bells. He can't get enough of them. Yeah, there's a lot of that. So no, he's drinking. He, uh, it was really hilarious because he said, yeah, I was a bit of a drinker, but all he had was half a bottle of wine a night. My mate once got so drunk he woke up in a river. <laughs> half That's a bottle of Merlot is nothing. My mate thought he was a duck. <laughs> I was saying in the book that he drank to deal with the pressure, and then he talks about some of the things that he was worried about, including that at the launch night of the Millennium Dome, an acrobat would fall on the Queen's head. That's... that's <laughs> mad! That's the kind of thing you worry about in a dream. <laughs> But it is, it is telling, it is always telling, I feel, about, the, about a nation's attitude towards alcohol, that everyone went, what? A whiskey and three glasses yeah. of wine? Yeah. I'll show him, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll show what a drink problem is. This is my drink problem, yeah. This would be the worst AA meeting ever. It'd be so <laughs> dull as well, because the other... OK, tell us about yourself. Well, Duncan's basically, uh, you know, he's lost his kids, he's, uh, he's found himself homeless on the street. How about you, Tony? Uh, well, first of all, hi, guys. Uh, <laughs> occasionally, I have a second glass of wine after dinner. Group yeah. hug? <laughs> <laughs> all in fairness, his drinking did lead to invading a country. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, that, that, that make, which makes the UN the international equivalent of a woman in a car park going, LEAVE HIM, yeah. Tariq, HE'S NOT <laughs> WORTH IT! <laughs> the UN made him the Middle East peace envoy after it started two wars in the Middle East. It would be like <laughs> making the woman who chucked that cat in a wheelie bin an RSPCA inspector. <laughs> As, as Prime Ministers go, it's nothing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. yeah. Churchill used to have a bottle of champagne for lunch, have another one apparently in the evening, yep. have three scotches, two brandies and a highball. So you think, well, it's no wonder he didn't want to appease Hitler, was it? <laughs> he, he was well up for a scrap, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, no, what, what, what people forget about Churchill, when Churchill was doing the old, we shall fight them on the beaches, yeah, he was 25 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> That lifestyle, he died at 32. That, that lifestyle really... That really yeah. I'm surprised he didn't go, oh, we're going to fight them on the beaches and we'll fight them in the pubs, outside the pubs, in the kebab <laughs> shops. Yeah. If, if they look at our women, we'll twat them then. <laughs> if we're in a late-night garage and we want more fags. <laughs> Churchill, that he said later in life his greatest regret was uh, never winning the Second World War. Didn't remember a thing. <laughs> <laughs> he also, let's be honest, he looked quite like you. And you are... <laughs> No, he did. Yeah. I'd say that as a compliment. Yeah, Try you, the, you, you uh, would take it as a compliment. Yeah. Like, he was a we will fight them man. on the beaches. Yeah. Say that. We will fight them on the beaches. I'm <laughs> 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 not sound like the Churchill dog. <laughs> 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 That was, no, it was old Tommy Cooper. Wait, what about him? Waddy, Waddy. Old Tommy Cooper. That's who the is that is. I don't oh. know who that is, but I think they've hey. usually got a carer with them. <laughs> oh, yeah, wait, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Say this. Never like like in the field of human conflict. I'm not doing Go. Churchill impersonations, <laughs> really. Do sexy, do sexy Churchill. Sexy Churchill. <laughs> I will fight you on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Why has William Hague been in the news recently? He's come out and said he's not gay. And uh, Cameron... Do I rethink the wording of that sentence exactly? Nope, not at all. That's all fine. Um, <laughs> William Hague this week said he wasn't gay. And yeah. uh, Cameron hardly helped matters by saying the entire Tory party were behind him. Probably <laughs> <laughs> a better way of putting that. It's, uh, I felt that's... so sorry for all he was doing was sharing a room yeah, with his mate. It's not as if he was watching Pineapple Studios rubbing his nipples. <laughs> It wasn't, wasn't quite his mate, though, was it? It was a special advisor. And you're wondering how good was the special advisor, how good was the advice that he was <laughs> yeah. giving him. Yeah. Oh, you wear a baseball cap, you wear wraparound shades, yeah. and what's more, book a twin room and put me in it. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, guys, come on, let's not... We, we share a room when we're on tour, don't we? No. Yeah, we do, don't lie. No, we don't, don't lie. lie. Me, Andy, Hugh in one bed, Dara's in the other. <laughs> Let's be honest, though, we're topping and tailing. We are. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it is ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, it, it is ludicrous. I mean, in fairness, yeah. I wouldn't sleep in the same room as any one of my mates because I'd wake up with no eyebrows and the word pedo on my face. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's if well, I that had known... would have been a great political story if you yeah. woke up with one eyebrow. Just him walking into PMQs with a Hitler moustache. I can explain this. Any of you want to do this? You know, that, it was embarrassing that picture of him walking around with the sunglasses, although he has suppressed this picture. And we're very proud to show. This is, uh... <laughs>
<laughs> so what, even if they shared the same bed? I, you know, I share a bed with a woman, does that make me a lesbian? No. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, it might eventually make her one, but <laughs> that is not the same. But this, this is the man who earns £400,000 a year. What on earth is he doing sharing a room? That just seems massively tight-fisted, mm. doesn't it? Some of us get night terrors, all right? <laughs> <laughs> What's funny you, about that, if there's a the goblin lights? under my bed... <laughs> Yeah, this, these rumours apparently followed him around since he was in, in university. Right. right? And uh, we all, he came on the national stage at 16, uh, speaking at, a, at, the, at the Tory conference, the youngest ever person to address the Tory conference. And then later the rumours came up that he is, well, he's got no, you know, uh, he doesn't have many female co companions. He said, yeah, but he's like a, a political dork who yeah. went bald in his 20s. That does not scream fanny magnet. Uh, <laughs> the best of times. God love him. That's what he looks like in the team. <laughs> His fault, you know. Take, take it from a nerd who lost his hair early. Yeah, you're fighting a difficult game at the yeah, best of times, aren't you? I've been reading about Haig, and apparently he has to compete with Rotterdam as a port. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, at the end of that round, the point of Chris Hugh and Milton! <laughs> now we play a round called Wayne Rooney's Threesome of Fun. This game, <laughs> this game involves Milton, Andy and Andy, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Politics. Who wants to come in on that? Andy. All right, so um, it's been a pretty amazing time for black people in politics. There's a lot of black women who are becoming movers and shakers in politics. We've got uh, Una King going up for a Labour candidacy for the mayoral election. We've got Diane Abbott. She's got her 33 nominations. She's going up for Labour leadership. Doesn't stand a chance. But um, <laughs> good luck to you. And, um, of course, we've got Floella Benjamin is in the House of Lords. Now, I know what you're thinking. How the hell did she get in there? Like, through the round window? <laughs> It's true. Now, I think we've shown that, obviously, we're up for change. We've shown we've got a sense of humour as well. That is the only way that Boris Johnson could have possibly got himself elected. <laughs> but I had a lovely story about Boris Johnson, about him and his dad. Apparently, they look very similar. And his, and, and his dad also likes riding a bike. And his dad was out one day riding his bike. And some random geezer just shouted at him, Oi, Johnson, you wanker. And he went, I think you mean my son. <laughs> I thought it was lovely. OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is security. You want to talk about this? Andy Parsons. That, that dog looks excited, doesn't he? <laughs> Do you think some old lady's trapped a cat in the suitcase? <laughs> <laughs> they did describe, right, the Times Square bomber as amateurish. Now, the reason for this was, apparently, he used non-explosive fertiliser. He hadn't created a bomb, he basically created a garden in the back of his SUV. <laughs> if he was a suicide bomber, if he pulled his jacket, a little bit of compost would have just trickled down his leg. <laughs> Some people, they think that Osama bin Laden is in fact dead. I don't think he's dead. I think we'll know when Osama bin Laden's dead. It'll be when Al-Qaeda release all of his videos as a box set. <laughs> OK, the leaders of Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. <laughs> Let's spin the wheel. So it is school. <laughs> when I was five years old, my teacher asked me if I wanted to take the school guinea pig home. Seven months later, I arrived in the African Republic of Guinea. <laughs> My parents didn't know where I was. The British consulate wouldn't help. My space hopper had a puncture. When I was at school, I spent half my time afraid of things like uh, fractions. Oh. Well, I say half my time. <laughs> 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 
It's not easy for teachers, though. I mean, where do you stand? Do you stand at the front of the class where you can write on the board, but you can't see the children? Or do you stand at the back where you can see the children, but you can't write on the board? I mean, no one's been able to solve that dilemma. Not by a long chalk. <laughs> When I was young, I baked an apple tart. I took it to Leeds, Liverpool and Reading. All because my maths teacher said, make sure you take pie to three dismal places. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that round of applause for the Nippon Jones. Come on, Mike. Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Andy, which category would you like? Um, sport, please. OK, sport is your category. The answer is three. What is the question? <coughs> is it the viewing figures for the Women's Rugby World Cup? <laughs> if you added two? <laughs> <laughs> is it the number of North Korean players who got home safely after the World Cup? <laughs> Is it, at what age is too young to be on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> Just done a shit, LOL. <laughs> is it how many sugar babes now have diabetes? <laughs> <laughs> is it how long does a game of I Spy take in seconds for a group of Chilean miners? <laughs> it's actually DJ. Is it, is it Javier again? It is Javier again. <laughs> Is it how many steps to heaven have been replaced by a wheelchair ramp? <laughs> how many people in Britain last year paid the right amount of tax? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many livers did George Best get through? He liked liver. He liked liver. <laughs> or is it how old was the boy who made my trainers? <laughs> I'm wearing hush puppies. <laughs> Is it how many Facebook friends have I got? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what is the minimum membership level for a musketeers club? It really wouldn't work. All for one and you for me. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it in fact on a Dulux colour chart, how many oranges are there that are in fact slightly brighter than Christine Bleakley's face? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, the minute you leave the BBC, you're dead to us. That's the way that works. <laughs> dead to us, Christine. <laughs> I only knew the correct answer. I know what the correct answer is. Is it allegedly the number of deliberate no balls the Pakistanis bowled in the last test match? Yes, that's absolutely right. Well done, Andy Parsi. <laughs> the question I was looking for was how many no balls were allegedly delivered to order by Pakistan cricketers in a 150 grand betting scam uncovered by the News of the World. This is the news that Pakistan cricketers Salman Butt, Mohammed Asif and Mohammed Amir have been suspended by the International Cricket Council after the News of the World claimed to have uncovered an alleged betting scam set up by London-based fixer Mazar Majid and said that he let the paper in on the max fixing scam in return for 150 grand. But it's a no ball, isn't it? It's effectively a footfall. If you're betting on footfalls, you have got a gambling problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you think that people would spot that, wouldn't you? I mean, let's face it, if you went into William Hill, right, and you said, oh, I think Andy Murray is going to do a footfall in the, the fourth point of the third game of the second set, wouldn't the person behind the counter go, that's a bit suspicious? <laughs> is, it, is it a bit specific? Yes, yes. Yeah. And for this, we only do this as a score, mate. Thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, I think it's absolutely astonishing. That it's, it's kind of sad, in a way, that there are people out there who are willing to bet on the fact that you know, watch cricket for long enough to see if no balls have been bowled during a test match. You can also bet on how many friends they've got <laughs> and the last, <laughs> the last time they managed to talk to a girl. Yeah. It's the... <laughs> but is it cricket really isn't tedious bet. Because if cricket isn't dull enough anyway, you're looking for dull things within a dull sport. Yeah. They've done a no ball within the dullness. Oh, that's like yeah, going... That's like uh, eating a vegan barbecue whilst listening to Dido. You can't get any dull. <laughs> Great allegations, aren't there? They're saying that there's a chance that they actually threw one of the matches yeah. against Australia last winter. And you're thinking, my goodness me, we have just lost them in the third test match. If it turns out that they were match fixing, we've just actually been trying to beat them and we lost to a team that quite possibly were trying to throw the match. Stop hitting the ball! <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing it under arm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing it in the 
most girlish way is stop hitting the damn ball. <laughs> well, I think people are taking it a bit, uh, sort of making it like it's really extreme or something. Because someone said in the papers as well, this is the worst crime uh, a sportsman can commit. I'm thinking, try telling OJ Simpson's wife that. <laughs> <laughs> well, got me, there was a quote in one of the papers, I think it was the News of the World, uh, said a thing about um, in this terrible time for Pakistan, which obviously it is the moment, in this terrible Pakistan, uh, while their nation was struggling with a, with, with a huge disaster, uh, these four men were defiling the traditions at Lords. And you're going, yeah, because that's really what the people of Pakistan <laughs> are worried about at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we have no possessions and our homes have been washed away, but as long as the home of cricket remains bound with integrity, <laughs> that's the most important thing yeah. to us here. It's absolutely yeah. extraordinary they paid 150 grand for the story, though, when the, normally they just hack into the players' voicemails. <laughs> <laughs> Paying nothing for it at all. I'll tell you what's scary as well, going into a betting shop. I mean, I'm not an alpha male. You just walk in, you're like, hello? <laughs> I'd like to bet on the national. And all the men look massive. Yes. They're made even bigger by the fact they're holding tiny pens. <laughs> <laughs> you see the little pen going, I wish I weren't in Argos. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that one day the Grand National you do feel like, yeah. I'd like to bet on a horse, please. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Which one has the prettiest name? <laughs> so I do it each <laughs> way. Did I come back? <laughs> Why was Wayne Rooney in trouble this week? Oh, Wayne well, Rooney allegedly, Dara, yes. uh, had sex with a prostitute. Yes, and allegedly. I yes. cannot wait for the uh, the songs that will come from the crowd <laughs> straight away because <laughs> that's exactly what it'll be. Wayne Rooney shagged a whore, and we all thought he couldn't score. His <laughs> wife's going to take his money from the bank next time. Wayne, just have a wank. <laughs> Great, but I think it's quite long for your average football supporter. <laughs> <laughs> she also said that, didn't she? She said she wouldn't have sex with him in his own house out of respect for Colleen. Yeah. And that's oh, like a woman crazy. with standards, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> Yes, he, he, he allegedly paid a grand for sex. A grand. There's girls in Norwich who'll do it for chips. That is <laughs> just a complete waste. And it, but it speaks volumes about how ugly Rooney is. He's a multi millionaire footballer. He still has to pay for sex. Yeah. But even, please touch me, penis. It's going to cost you, Shrek. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's brutal. I think the real problem now is that there's going to be people in Norwich watching this going, oh, I'm just going to go out to the fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Six packs of chips, please. Yes. <laughs> I'll, t I'll tell you how middle class I am. When I saw the uh, the headline on News of the World, cheating Rue Beds Hooker, I thought Kanga's going to be furious. <laughs> 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 the other thing as well is he's got because it was listing like all his earnings and what might be compromised because of what's happened, and he's got a five million pound book deal. Like, who wants a book by Wayne Rooney? No, do you know what I mean? What does it he's say? Written, like, do you know he's written two already? And I, they have sold. But I know, I can't, I can't get... Like, what does it say in there? Like, scored a goal, banged a prozzy. Chapter 2. Scored a goal, banged a prozzy. <laughs> Chapter 3. Swallowed a Lego. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favourite things is people say, oh, he's going to lose his sponsorship, you know. Uh, the papers say he's going to lose his sponsorship money. Like, kids aren't going to buy Coke because Rudy really? really cheated. I'm really thirsty, but I... I just don't believe in sex outside wedlock. <laughs> <laughs> OK. The end of that round, the point is going to Russell, Andy and Andy! <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read at this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panels can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely things to read in a political memoir. <laughs> So we were playing truth or dare, and I didn't want to tell the truth, so I shagged Edwina Curry. <laughs> <laughs> Big Ben struck 12 and stopped. Thank God, my buttocks were on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd press the button that summoned the tea lady. Imagine my surprise when it turned out I bombed Russia. <laughs> I think the greatest thing about m meeting the Queen was listening to him singing Candle in the Wind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say what you like about Robert Mugabe, but that moustache makes all the difference to foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> I suspected that John Prescott was having an affair when the four legs of his desk came through the ceiling above me. <laughs> I was actually at college with Saddam Hussein. We were at Sussex together doing chemistry and combined inhumanities. <laughs> uh, 
At the start, there were three women in the cabinet, five in the cellar and two under the patio. <laughs> Deciding to go to war was one of the tensest games of eeny, meeny, miny, mo I have ever played. <laughs> We'd sometimes break up boring cabinet meetings by convincing David Blunkett he was black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when we got into Bosnia, the first thing we did was get the United Nations troops <laughs> setting up trestle tables with plates of cheese straws and sausage rolls. But it turns out we were supposed to provide a buffer, not a buffet. <laughs> John Prescott, an autobi... Uh, an autobi... a book by me. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, you bastard, he said. No one fucks with Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> The next topic is things you wouldn't hear in a medical documentary. I know you're a teenage mother, but nobody will patronise you here. Come through to the slag ward. <laughs> <laughs> next, he was put in a cat scanner. Unfortunately, the cat was still in it. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Nick Griffin comes round after the face transplant, and that's not the colour he was expecting. <laughs> OK, now, cough and cough again. OK, yeah, I've got the diagnosis. Got a cough. <laughs> Eventually, doctors had to break his leg in six places. It was the only way to stop him running round the ward, the little tosser. <laughs> 34% of people in this country have irritable bowel... Se oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what this attractive patient doesn't realise is Dr Singh was struck off years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Brian is 75 stone. He hasn't left the house for three years. What a fat bastard. <laughs> After months of tests, doctors finally discovered what had caused his blindness. He'd been masturbating too much. <laughs> Today we're attempting a slightly difficult operation. What we're hoping to do is remove the Adam's apple with a pair of tweezers without the patient's nose flashing red. <laughs> Tara removes her top to reveal a hideous skin infection. Look away now if you're eating Rice Krispies. <laughs> <laughs> the Siamese twins were joined in the most embarrassing place imaginable and known by friends as the skipping rope. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Andy Osho, and Russell Howard. Congratulations <laughs> to Chris Anderson, Hugh Jones, and Nick and Jones. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Darren Green. Good night. <laughs>